Carlos Saisu alongside Dr. Alan Beyer of the Hogue Orthopedic Institute. Dr. Beyer, welcome back to the Road to Recovery. How you doing, Carlos? Good to be back. And let me tell you, those boys out there on the field sure give us plenty of stuff to talk about, don't they? One notable being Matthew Stafford. It's been a thumbs down for the Rams uh, lately going into the bye week at three and six now. But Matthew Stafford, a sprained UCL in his throwing hand after his hand got jammed in a Cowboys helmet. The Rams, like I mentioned, going into the bye week. Dr. Byer, can you explain what a sprained UCL is in his thumb? Okay, so UCL basically means ulnar collateral ligament. And that just means it's a ligament that holds one of the joints together, in this case, the thumb. Um, and it's on the ulnar side of the thumb, which means the outside. I'm holding up my hand here. It means the outside of the thumb, this side, that's towards the pinky, okay? Um, not to be confused with the ulnar collateral ligament of the elbow, which is the subject of Tommy John surgeries. That's the ligament that's injured in a Tommy John procedure, medial collateral or ulnar collateral ligament uh, of the elbow. So we have, we, we describe ligaments based on what their anatomic placement is. Uh, and in this case, this is a ligament that connects the thumb from the metacarpal joint to the first phalanx, the proximal phalanx, and it's on the ulnar side of the thumb. So that's why it's called the ulnar collateral ligament. This is a commonly injured ligament, very commonly injured ligament. As a matter of fact, the, the, the entity, when it happened, used to be called back in the old days, gamekeeper's thumb. The reason being that in jolly old England, when they would kill rabbits to break their neck, they would press their thumb against the rabbit's neck and move this way to break the rabbit's neck. And that would put stress on this very same ligament, tearing it, hence the term gamekeeper's thumb. As, as things got modernized and the PETA people were against calling anything a gamekeeper's thumb, um, it actually, for a long period of time, was called a skier's thumb. Because very often when a skier would hold their ski pole and wrap the little strap around their thumb and then hold the pole. When they'd lose the pole, the ski pole would pull the thumb in that direction, tearing that very same ligament, the ulnar collateral ligament. So it's a gamekeeper's thumb. It's a ski pole thumb. Now let's call it a jammed against a uh, rushing lineman's helmet thumb, because that's how this happened. It was a jamming injury where his thumb hit the helmet and was pushed in that direction tearing the ulnar collateral ligament. Now, sometimes this can be a surgical injury um, in two circumstances. If the ligament is completely disrupted and actually gets trapped underneath the capsule that surrounds it, um, where the ligament can't go and lay back in the normal position that it would need to lay in to heal, that can sometimes cause the need for surgery to untrap the ligament and lay it back in its anatomical position, fix it with a couple of stitches. There's also uh, a circumstance where this injury can happen and actually pull a little piece of bone off of the proximal phalanx of the thumb when it happens because the ligament is attached to the bone. So it's not a pure ligament injury. It pulls a little piece of bone with it. And if that piece of bone is not laying right where it belongs next to the, the bed that it evulsed from, uh, I think that's called a Stenner lesion, if my early training rem uh, remains um, with me. Um, that can sometimes require the need to actually pin back that little piece of bone in anatomic position so the ligament doesn't wind up healing in a, in a lax position, in too loose a position. So sometimes this is a surgical lesion. If that had been the case with Matthew, I think we would have known that by now, and he probably would already be in a cast and be healing after his surgery. Um, if it's a grade two partial tear um, or the uh, grade one tear, which is even more mild, or those other two conditions don't exist, this injury can be treated just by immobilization. Uh, and in the case of a quarterback, by three weeks from now, it's not going to be 100% healed. He'll still need to have it heavily taped and protected, but that shouldn't um, modify too much his ability to grip the football and hold the football. So he should be able to play. Um, the biggest danger is that 
receiving a snap from center, you might see the ball jam the thumb in that direction again and kind of aggravate it a little bit. That would be a little bit sore. You might see him actually take more snaps from the shotgun position than under center in that first few weeks that he's back because there's less chance of having the ball hiked to you and catching it in the air from the center than when your hands are right under the center's bottom and you're taking the ball snapped back into your hand of re-jamming the thumb. So my guess would be that you'll see Stafford taking more snaps in a shotgun position the first week or two he's back than from under center. Uh, he'll probably be heavily taped, as I said, and maybe even a soft, well, he can't really wear a soft cast. It's his throwing hand. Um, so that, that's that's the likelihood. The bye week certainly comes at a good time for him. There's no doubt about that. Now the Rams have also signed Carson Wentz as a backup for Matthew Stafford. Can Can you also kind of put into our heads, if you are on the training staff for the Rams, what do you need to see from Stafford to see signs of improvement that he will be back after the bye? So first of all, he's got to prove to me that he can take a snap without flinching, without thinking it's going to hurt. How how comfortable is he with it heavily taped? Um, you know, next week he's off. The week after might be a week or so early from when this happened, because that would make it about a month after the injury when it happened. And typically conservative treatment to these is six weeks of immobilization before you let somebody go back to full play. But you know what? I mean, Justin Herbert broke his finger. It came through the skin. He went back out in the second half and played. I mean, these guys, when push comes to shove, many of them are Superman. I mean, they just ignore it and they get back. I still remember a game back a couple of years ago with the Raiders, um, you know, with, with their quarterback getting a dislocated finger and getting it popped back in in the tent and running back out there with his finger all taped up. So, you know, these guys are, are warriors and, and they know that if they can stand the pain and they're not going to let their team down, they're still able to perform, they're going to do it. That's just what they're paid to do. Football players, they are just built different. Uh, I mean, the way that you're describing it. Not all of them. I th- there are some of them that there are some of them that ride the pine and don't want to leave the pine when that when the coach says, "Hey, get in there," and they go, oh, "I'm not warmed up." I, I won't name a certain defensive back that the the Chargers got rid of a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, but so it's not universal. But you know, these guys are out there to play. They realize it and they want to play. If they can help their team, they want to be out there. Man, you got to love the game. You really got to love the game. Dr. Byer, I'm curious, in your practice, a sprained UCL in the thumb, how have you seen that injury happen to maybe the average Joe? Maybe not playing football and their their hand getting hit on a helmet, but where have you seen other sprained UCLs happen? Basketball. It's a very easy mm-hmm. basketball to hit the thumb and drive in that direction. Mike Trout. Isn't this what he had a couple of years ago, sliding headfirst into second base and wound, wound up having surgery? And where's that oven mitt now to kind of protect his thumb? I would just tell him, Mike, don't slide head first. you know, <laughs> go first with your feet. That's easier to protect. You're in shoes. Um, so it, it can happen in any sport where you really have the chance of a projectile or another person's body bending your thumb in that direction. So it's it's a pretty common it's a pretty common orthopedic injury. Like I said, skiers, it's a very, very common injury. We all know Matthew Stafford has a history of being a gunslinger. How much do you think this will affect him? Of course, we don't know the, the exact measure of the injury, but how do you think this will affect him, one, for the rest of the season? And is this something may be, that he may take care of in the offseason? Well, I think if he didn't have it fixed right away, the likelihood is it's going to sock in and heal without the need for future reconstructive surgery. Because if it, if it was loose enough that it heals loose, they would have said, no, we're operating on this now. This isn't one of those things like Kobe used to do with his fingers when his fingers had chronic sprains and he would wait till the end of the season to have it fixed. This isn't that kind of thing. And the thumb to a quarterback is huge. I mean, that's, that's the only finger that he's holding the ball with on, on that side of the ball. He's got, you know, three or four other fingers that he's holding it with on the other side. But on the thumb side, it's it's only the thumb. So if that was unstable enough that he couldn't grip that football, they would have fixed it right away. That's not a wait till the end of the season fix. So he's 
he's obviously not severe enough to the point where it needs to have surgery. And he doesn't have one of those, the bony lesion or the ligament that was folded under itself type of lesion that I alluded to. Dr. Beyer, you and I are both football fans too, and we observe the Rams from afar. Would you say as a fan, is it worth for Matthew Stafford to even come back this season? Um, you know, that's always a great question. You, 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 it's awful tough to throw the towel in after only eight or nine games um, for a couple of reasons. This year, some of these divisions are, there's no runaway, you know, three weeks ago, I was told the 49ers have that division, forget about it. You know, why bother? But then they lose three in a row and suddenly that division is up for grabs again. So I think that things are so close this year. You have no undefeated teams left in the NFL. Um, the closest to an undefeated is the Eagles, who, you know, literally squeaked by Dallas the other day. So everybody seems beatable and everybody seems one key injury away from going down in flames. So I think that you got to you got to play the games. And I think to just say he's done is, you know, I, 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 with a major injury like the Aaron Rodgers injury that we've already talked about on this show, I'd be more inclined to say shut it down for the rest of the season than I would for a, a thumb that's going to heal in, in six weeks and he's going to be able to play. So I'd say no, I, I, I wouldn't shut him down for the season. No, nobody sees, nobody except Carolinas and the Bears seasons are probably over yet. Dr. Vire of the Hogue Orthopedic Institute, thank you very much again for joining us on the road to recovery. Thank you for having me and always a pleasure. And remember my show every Saturday, 12 noon on Angels Radio, AM 830, Doctor in the Dugout. We'll see you there.